Unicast is, again, like sending a letter with the post office. I put the envelope in the mailbox and it's sent to that person. Now, Unicast is great when I want to send unique information to one destination. But what happens when I want to send the same information to multiple destinations? Well, if I'm sending the same information to multiple locations with Unicast, I have to duplicate those transmissions over and over again. It's like sending party invitations where I'm going to drop multiple envelopes in the mailbox. Now, in this example, you can see I'm putting a strain on the transmitter. Eventually, that would run out of bandwidth, right? Well, not only that, but if I have multiple switches, it would put additional bandwidth on the trunk lines. The data in triplicate is being sent across this link. Now, Unicast is great for one-to-one -one communication. And even when I'm splitting signals, there might be times when I'm going to choose Unicast. We'll talk about that later in the chapter. But if I'm trying to do a truly massive distribution, there might be better ways to do this. So let's compare this with broadcast. So in a postal analogy, broadcast messages are kind of like junk mail. I'm going to hit everybody in a postal code, and each person can go through the messages they receive and decide if these apply to them or not. When the broadcast message is sent to the first switch, that switch will send it out to all ports. Of course, one of those links goes to another network switch, and that device will send it out all of its ports as well. Now, when we're sending large messages, the problem with broadcast is that it goes to every device on the network. Most likely, that means a lot of devices are getting data that they don't want, and we could quickly overwhelm the port speed of those devices. Multicast transmissions aim to split the difference between unicast and multicast. Think of it like a magazine subscription. Devices that are interested in a particular stream will subscribe to it. The switch makes a note of that and coordinates with the other switches to build the distribution list. Now, when the data for that transmission is sent, the switches can look at their distribution lists. The first switch realizes it only needs to send the stream to the second switch, and that second switch knows exactly which devices wanted that stream. So, with multicast, the transmitter only had to send this data once, and the only devices that received it are the ones that wanted it. Now, multicast, as we showed it to you, assumes that a function like IGMP snooping is engaged on your switch. Most switches will default with IGMP snooping off. So if your switch doesn't support IGMP snooping, or if it's not engaged, then it will do the best it can in a backwards compatible way. It will send that multicast traffic to every port in your broadcast domain, or in your VLAN. So this is what multicast distribution looks like without IGMP snooping. And this is what multicast distribution looks like with IGMP snooping. So the more multicast traffic you have on your network, the more likely you are to use IGMP snooping. When configuring IGMP snooping, you probably want to turn it on on all switches. However, there is a feature called the IGMP querier. The IGMP querier will be the device that keeps the master list of where all of the multicast subscriptions go. So you'll want all switches to have IGMP snooping engaged, but only one of them would be the IGMP querier. Okay, so Dante can send audio or video media as unicast or multicast. In our system, we have two icons. The dot with the arrow indicates unicast, meaning you're transmitting to one device. Multicast has an icon with a dot and a forked arrow, indicating that the network can split that signal for you. Now, this will become more important when you progress to level three, but it's worth noting that unicast traffic can cross a router to other networks. It targets an IP address and it's routable. We would call that a layer three connection. However, multicast is limited in scope. It will not cross the router. Its distribution is limited to the broadcast domain in which it sits. And in fact, if we look at the diagrams I drew earlier, you'll notice that unicast crossed the router, while multicast did not. Another benefit to unicast is that it can achieve lower latency than multicast. Unicast packets have the address of the intended recipient right on it. As a result, it can traverse the switch more quickly. Multicast arrives with a subscription number. The switch then needs to look that number up, figure out who wants that packet, possibly duplicating the signal for each path it must take. Now all of this extra work can start taxing your CPU in your switch. So 
We design our multicast packets so it's less burden for the switch to move through. And of course, we allow more time for it to get across the network. If you're ever concerned about how much load your switch is taking on, know that managed switches will often offer a chart showing the CPU load. This was a clip from the Dante Certification Program. To learn more, go to Audinate.com slash certify.